Hey guys, welcome to the Barrel Project. This is episode 24. This is all about the 50 meter game with Dilly and Demmer. Enjoy. Joining in right now. So Zerzak I... is actually going to show up this year? Yeah. We can't. <laughs> <laughs> I got to keep PG. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's, he's he's taking over your place. Good. <laughs> yeah. So he's gonna get the abuse you got last year. <laughs> <laughs> well, if he brings uh, yeah, his big I bag think... of discs, he will. <laughs> <laughs> he uh, how, why did he bail out last year? I can't remember. He was supposed to be there. Going Ex on, you know, uses uh, same thing stuff. as normal. Uh, <laughs> he um, I, stubbed yeah, his toe. He's his pride <laughs> I was yeah i wish i could be today. there he's working on some stuff right now i don't know what Bo he's bringing i think he's bringing that short thing that's always been shooting but... yeah i think he's i think he's feathers make sure he brings feathers heavy hunting arrows five inch feathers. That's a good idea 23 series arrows yeah i'm sure 50 grain Deep. tips Deep yeah, impact, good idea. Deep six or something point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Big helical on those feathers. Yeah, we have, we have given Zernzak so much information that he should come and at least shoot like a six seventy with well, all of the right. all the stuff. You know, that we've given him. So. he's probably going to be smoke. He's probably going to smoke us for sure. Well, well, the Definitely smoke you, Frank. <laughs> I don't know, man. I feel pretty good right now. My, as That's you good. can see by my video, that my form has changed tremendously. A little bit. Yeah. I didn't get to listen to your, you know, little walk march with the compound and stuff. I, I, I didn't get a chance to listen to the audio, audio of that one. Of which one? The one you did your little TikTok when you're walking to the, grab the compound. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, just, I saw that. Yeah, <laughs> just like a, uh, the compound, compound shooters transition to, uh, to trad. I completely bypassed bear bow. I just picked up a long bow because it was standing there. I also think I was hyped up on meds <laughs> at the moment. Because I was only like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm still a little swollen. This side or this side's pretty oh. good. This side, not so much. I still your I belly looks swollen. I'll tell you that. No, come on. <laughs> I lost a lot of weight. Yeah. I feel good. I feel really good. That's good. Yeah, I'm I last like last year losing all the weight that I did lose. I lost so much strength with that. How are you doing with it, by the way? Or are you not really? <laughs> Same. Oh, Ter going, Tara's going not back helping to the me. Gym was the best thing that I did like two months ago and really hitting it hard. And then surgery just uprooted that nonsense. But, you know, Monday I'm going back. So I can start lifting again. But cool. I'm like a week or two away. Do you guys both have here. your wis wisdom teeth out? Oh. I had all four of mine pulled at one time. Same. Yeah. I think I was playing basketball the next day. But you must have been younger. There's no way. Yeah, this is your I was like 18. Because you're like I was 65 on, now. So I was on like codeine <laughs> after. <laughs> I drooled for like I drooled for like 40 hours. <laughs> what I had, in cut, the world? I had to cut mine out. Look at here. What do you see? The mug on this that all of a sudden is coming. See if he actually turns on his camera, Maddie. Um, so, while I don't know if Zernzak's actually joining or he, he's just sitting on the sideline here right now, I'm not sure. Um, but this is our first like official live version of the podcast. So, I the disclaimer is is that I have no responsibility ah. for anything <laughs> that John Demmer says. <laughs> i'll keep it pg as long as i can i know um <laughs> we'll just edit i just got excited <laughs> um, but i will say that we're gonna try to do them this way from now on it takes a lot of coordination and stuff when you have different guests um but what's nice is that it allows us to record
whatever time of the day, because I'm going to warn you people, sometimes it's 10 o'clock at night. We've recorded until 1 30, 2 o'clock in the morning already. So anything can happen. Um, but what's nice is that and you guys that are following us on Facebook can ask questions and stuff like that and interact with what we're talking about. This is episode like 24, and this is about the 50 meter game with inter- uh, Outdoor Target Nationals coming. Um, these two are two of the best barebow 50 meter shooters that we have in our country. Um, and were subsequently one and two last year in both the open and outdoor and like, yeah, Dilly, you got second in nationals right, last year, right? Yep. But you got him back in the open. He, um, he got a very distant second. Like, <laughs> couldn't, even, couldn't even see him. <laughs> he shot very good. Um, but I wanted to, uh, you know, I, I know Dillinger is not shooting target nationals this year, but he is shooting field nationals. So he's going to talk about is set up for the 50 meter game and you know it, it wouldn't be a bad discussion because i know there's some new shooters going to field nationals for you to also talk about what your setup is for that which is fine um that's a whole other podcast really but let's put it out there because people are prepared for it anyway um we'll talk about some tuning pitfalls um you know things that people maybe worry about a little too much um, and aren't worrying on worrying about the right things or what they're trying to do to, for a setup. Maybe when we talk about setups, it will help some of you out there that are having a hard time finding a 50 meter tune. It'll help. Um, and we'll talk about tournament prep. Um, tournament prep doesn't necessarily mean shooting. Um, it, it's 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 going to be a combined idea of what are you doing to prepare, prepare and what are you bringing with you. What are you, you know, uh, we can talk about that a little bit because last year I know with the weather, I was caught way off guard. So I stopped on my way down. I have to pick up some stuff. So, all right, enough of me. Matt, did you um, want to hop in and start with a question or anything? Are you good? You just going to hang out? You're on mute. How do you not know this? (laughs) I was just going to hang out, honestly. Okay. Oh, so you're just bringing in your beautiful chiseled face. All right, let's turn his video off. <laughs> oh, he turned it off on his own. Perfect. Um, thanks, for, thanks for joining us anyways, Matt. Uh, he might pick up on some some questions or something um, in the live feed so he can pop in or chat in the message or whatever. So, gentlemen, it's nice to see your faces again. Believe it or not, I mean that. So let's talk about your setups right now. Um, and John, let's talk about what your setup is, would be for 50 meter. And let's talk about what it actually is for field nationals. And we'll, we'll go down that road a little bit before we get into the questions that were submitted earlier. So, um, Dilly, why don't you give it a go? I think the, the two tunes would be really similar. I mean, other than, I mean, arrows are probably going to be really similar because I need to get a 50 meter point on when you shoot field anyway. Um, so the arrow is going to be really similar. Um, I like shooting more front of center. I'm, I think Demer is kind of the same way. So if I can put a 100 grain to 120 grain point up front, I always seem to, to shoot better. They seem to group a little bit better. Um, but I like last year for outdoor nationals, target nationals, I shot um, BAPS. I was shooting 500 spine, uh, 100 and 10 grain points uh, they're either 110 or 120 is what I finally settled on um, which is nice if you have multiple spines to play with multiple you know you can try different poundages different brace heights things like that it's really you need to find the right tin I mean it's little changes seem like they they mean a lot um, sometimes you know it's it was honestly last minute I was between 600 spine and 500 spine and I could get a little bit better grouping with the 500 spine and it was like a couple of days before the shoot last year that I decided on those and I'm glad I did um but bows I shoot around 41 pounds um and that gets me right at 50 meters and a lot of people send me messages and they're like how do I get 50 meters I gotta crawl down I'm like just crawl down you know what I mean if you have a good tune and you, you know, you have to crawl down a quarter inch, big deal. 
it's really not going to make that big of a difference in my mind. I think the biggest problem you see on the shooting line is just a bad tune. I mean, um, a lot of people are maybe inexperienced or really don't know how to tune a bow. Um, maybe find somebody that does and that can get behind you and look at your arrow flight and see, because I think that's the biggest problem a lot of people run into is they show up with an arrow that's coming out of there, either porpoising or, um, you know, it's like a dog wagging its tail. Um, you know, that makes a big difference. Um, but um, that's pretty much it. I do, I usually add, you know, a few ounces to my riser for those windy days. I just either bring an extra weight with me or I just put it on there and just shoot it before the shoot because target nationals, there's going to be wind. There's always wind. Um, so it may be 10 miles an hour, but it also may be gusting 30. <laughs> right. I mean, it's every target nationals I've shot, there's been crazy wind or some form of wind, swirling wind. Um, so my, my biggest um, tip is if it's windy, go shoot. Um, tune your bow on a not windy day and just hold off. But tune your bow on a not windy day, but make sure you practice when there is wind. Practice you get on the windy days. Yeah. That, I showed up for my, my first one and I was actually adjusting my plunger on the line. I was like, I'm going to compensate for this wind. I'm going to give it a little plunger tension, you know? And oh no, before I knew it, my bow was so far out of tune. It was <laughs> since that point. Off team, off team. Yeah. <laughs> so since that point, I just, I just aim off, you know, I mean, even if you got to aim over in that, you know, two, three line, I mean, do it and just get comfortable doing that. Some people have, I think some issues with holding off target. So you really need to practice that. Um, you know, I'm even, I'm sure even the pounders and the, you know, the freestyle shooters, they, they're holding off. They're not adjusting their side every single arrow they shoot you know you can't do that you'll just be chasing your tail uh, that's pretty much it i, I want to you you mentioned and this is not a 50 meter um i guess interjection this is actually a field interjection but so for field nationals your goal is to have a point on of 50 meters 55 yards well you know like get as close as a crawl can. or no crawl no, finger touch in the knock is usually I try to get. Um, in the past, I've had to hold a little bit high. I know it, it just depends on the shooter, you know. I think Dimmer has no problem getting 50 meters where I struggle sometimes. Um, it seems like Bo, the last couple of years, I've been able to get 50 meters, no problem. But in the past, I, I kind of struggled there. But, um, you know, that's the farthest target we shoot, you know, the 80 centimeter at 50 meters. So, I mean, I don't like to, I don't like to hold over or anything like that. So pretty much my outdoor tune is really close to a field tune. As long as I can get them to, you know, to crawl down to the 10 meters. Mm -hmm. but, and what, your, what bow are you shooting right now? It's the, the 27 inch. Um, it's the Hoyt and I'm shooting extra long limbs. I might go back to the 25. I don't know. Um, fields you seem to you know you got trees and you've got you know other things it's kind of maybe hard to negotiate so you're shooting extreme uphills yeah. and downhills and so I don't know I may I may go back to the 25 inch riser and see you know because it, it seemed to shoot pretty well too but I do like the extra long limbs that's for sure yeah agreed all right thanks man yep JD3 how about you Besides what's sitting there behind you on over your <laughs> shoulder. <laughs> I know you're playing with a couple bows. Right it's sitting now. in the bowl there. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Rub it in. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually from NFA indoors. <laughs> mm -hmm. But uh that's my setup right now. I got I'm bouncing between two of them. I got the epic set up right now as well. Um oh, so I'm bouncing okay. between this and, and the epic. But this is a 27 exceed. I got regular long velos. My XLs are kind of a little bit on the heavy side for me, so I've been just playing playing around with, with that. Uh, right now, I got the sniper and biter set up. Right now, who knows what that's going to be like in 
two days, let alone two weeks, five weeks. You're <laughs> playing with some weights there too. That's that's different. Uh, yeah, they're. Um, I've been playing around with the the white weight too. So I was just playing around, messing around, trying to find the that's team always. that I like, the scores that I like. Um, if I don't shoot the scores I think I should be shooting, I mess around a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, right now, let's say I got the I had the epic tuned up pretty good got 700 spines working on them pretty good really? and uh was struggling with this a little bit i shot some pretty good scores in practice with 700 mm-hmm. spine but my arrows were wobbling a little bit and so i finally got around to stop being lazy and had the wife help me out and scaled out my epic to see how much i was pulling on that and scaled that thing out and that thing was like yeah i knew it was lighter but i didn't realize it was that much lighter it was like two and a half three pounds lighter mm-hmm. so put uh how many pounds are you shooting oh i keep hitting everything i don't know if you can see that or not Um, here hold on a second um let me do me a favor let me spotlight your video go ahead and show us i can't know if i can see it but right inside there i put an extra shim oh yeah (laughs) add a couple (laughs) add a pound and a half so i'm getting a pound and a half more and then gave it one more one more crank and so i got them both set up at 41 and a half to 42 pounds on my fingers. So, I'm going to, can you kind of, oh, yes. <laughs> we're, we're, we're going right. I got, right. Oh, I got, got plenty of those. Shoot. That's right. Yes. <laughs> Frank, let him go. Um, <laughs> can you, can you sort of elaborate on the shim? Because a lot of people are going to say, what in the world is that? Or I know you said it's going to increase the poundage, but what kind of shim is it? What's it made out of? It's just, what do you do? It's just a washer. Yeah. It's just two. It's two. Like I got washers in both of them. They're like a sixteenth of an inch thick. So it's basically adding a another turn on your on your limb bolts. Um, I get about a pound, pound and a half out of one with the velos. That's velos are really nice stiff limbs. So adding it, preloading it, that one extra pound or pound and a half doesn't seem to make them very noodly, like some of the other limbs. Um, I've shot in the past when I tried that, they get super spongy. Like I could get them on my fingers and I could just wiggle my fingers and I see the tips, both tips going like, mm-hmm. and that's not always good because if you, if you mess up your finger pressure on the back end and you're like a little heavy here, a little light there, they're going to really wobble. And it's pretty much what you're basically doing is shooting a not tillered tuned bow, which can get really squirrely. Um, so I was playing around with tiller tune in this one, uh, with this one too. And, you know, it's, it's pretty neat when you're, you're struggling pretty good and you think you're shooting good. Your form's good. Groups suck. Score sucks. And then you start look dissecting your equipment a little bit better and you figure out where something's off. I, I was messing around with negative tiller tune a while ago and I just basically never reset the limb bolts and still had a negative tiller and, just couldn't score worth a crap change it back to positive and now right back to where it was before yeah and that's um, a good segue into like the whole tuning pitfalls thing because and, and honestly chris back is, is one of the one of our supporters and he joined in the zoom was having some tiller issues of his own at the eastern that was at that's a like a sponsor rob caulfield was involved in that moving to paul Myra sportsman you know, and I was having some tiller issues, you know, and um, I know indoor season two years ago, I was playing with, I think, positive, I think positive tiller though. And is it positive or negative that puts the pressure on the grip? And that was making me hit high. I don't, I don't remember which one it was, but I was playing around with it. And Grayson was like, yeah, if you want to, you run with that, that's going to happen though. And I just, I stayed, stayed with even tiller moving forward after that. I don't, yeah. play around with it too much well, what about, about you one thing i wanted to go back before we get too i always far just ahead. leave mine even i you know i i've tried messing with it before and it just feels like my bow is out of tune <laughs> i don't know you know if you mess with it too much i don't know i know dimmer plays with it more than i do but i usually just set mine up even um and go from there but i just got his face that he made that's funny Dimmer, go ahead finish your thought Oh, so this was going back to when Dil- when Dilly was talking. He's talking about getting point on and stuff. Um, yeah, you know, a lot of people just overstressed about that. I wanted to make sure 
people understood it doesn't matter. You can string walk 50 meters. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Right right now I'm string walking half inch. Doesn't That's pretty matter. far actually. From, yeah, from it's pretty 50 straight. meters. Wow. It's, yeah. Yeah, it's it is what it is. <laughs> what tip what what tip weight are you shooting in on? And what arrow? One ten one ten. One ten nanos. My nanos are kind of cut a little short this year. The bow tuned a little different for me this year. So they are a little bit shorter. Um, I think my arrow, my arrow, oh, bugger. <laughs> but my arrow tip is pretty much coming right to here. So, okay. A little bit last year, I had a little bit longer arrows probably here. So I had a little, I still crawled a little bit last year, but it wasn't as much. Maybe it was a quarter inch. But I'm not too worried. As long as I can hit 50, I don't care what my, um, I don't care what my crawl is. It, it, it never matters really. Um, I do. Yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm at the bottom of my knock point, approximately where my, where my um, crawl is. So it's only a quarter inch or so. Man, I'm not, I'm not a big fan pounds. of, I'm not a big fan of exactly point on because, you know, what, what if one day you're hitting a little bit low? Mm-hmm. Then you have to change yeah, your just, aiming techniques. Yeah, crawl and, up a little bit. Yeah, I'll be so honest. It's not a you. bad thing. Yeah, I in the fifty meter game, I actually kind of like being able um, to aim on a color contrast. If that makes sense, I I find it easier to put the the tip of my arrow at the top of the gold at the edge of the red, as opposed to the bottom or floating in that big huge so i think sometimes people aren't specific enough with their aim at 50 meters i've seen that a lot with the kids too because that gold is just so big it looks it's like just get it there and they're not being like you can be a little bit more finite with the aim and it'll reflect down range when you're able to do that so i try to set my tip my point on at the top of the goal because I have that contrasting color that I can get it there and leave it there. I get to the gold. I want to float around a lot. You know, I float around so much more for some reason than 50 meters. I actually think I'm more relaxed at 50 meters than I am on a 40 centimeter. I don't know if you guys are the same way or not, but. I think I am. Yeah. Indoors for me is the, by far the most stressful shooting. Yeah, I agree. So I actually, There's I no, really enjoy shooting no 50 meters. Yeah. <laughs> Um, oh, I know Dimmer's got some cool tricks for shooting in the wind. Um, what, what are some so, of your tricks there, John? We do talk about, we talked about that last year, John. You should talk about that though, but I caught, go ahead. Just talk about it. <laughs> all right. Let me see if I can do this without knocking everything over and still have an earpiece in. You mean all those trophies and, and plaques Probably. that are all over the place? <laughs> Knock things. over all the bowls. That's pretty all much all I need to do all the honey to-do lists. Um, so normally, you know, ideally, you want to shoot with your bow like this. Where, where are we at? Bugger, I can't get it straight. Okay, there we go. So normally, you want to shoot like a like this. But for me, if I'm if the wind's coming this way and my arrows drifting that way, um, I like aiming at the middle. So a lot of times, I'll just do I'll do a little bit of this, or if it's blowing the other way. I'll do a little bit of this. I'll do a little canting. I'll cant in the wind and still aim at the at the center. Or the other thing, what I like to do is um, I've had some 60 millimeter high excess wings. Mm-hmm. And I wish I had, I wish I had one on me. Um, so I, I have a bunch of arrows fleshed up with a 60 millimeter high. And if I know we're gonna go into the tournament and we're gonna hit 15, 20 mile an hour winds, that one year we shot, we had 30 mile an hour winds steady all day um i basically canted into the wind just a little bit and aimed right at the gold every single time but i took those 60 cent uh, 60 millimeter wings and they come out like there's a profile that comes up and straight comes to another point and then comes down so what i did i said i took this point right here cut straight down straight taper all the way down to the end and it gave me an extreme low profile fletching so I'll do something like that if we get extreme wind. So I'm not getting blown around hardly at all. It's a, it's enough uh, fletch on there. So you're not shooting a bear shaft, but it knocks a lot of the fletch off. So it doesn't get blown around. 
And I know there one should of the be questions... a disclaimer that goes with that because people will go and try that. And they've never, they didn't bear shaft. And they're like, yeah. why does this hit four feet to the left? Get, well, get, get, give me one second. I'm going to go get, I'm going to go get an arrow and show you guys. Yeah, go ahead. You're good. <laughs> You're good. No worries. Okay. We can say all the things we really want to say. He's gone. <laughs> <laughs> He's gone. Um, yeah. I, I'm still, I'm using the 25 exceed that um, I was blessed enough to get from you and the XL, the XL limbs. And I, I have to admit like indoor until I put one of those discs on the front, um, like Demer has, but mine, it's not, there's no, it's not a hole in the middle. It's a hole at the top. So I can offset it because I definitely like, I struggled with the weight weight. on that. Now it wasn't the yeah. forward weight like you were using. It was the one that goes like around the, the riser. Yeah, I just yeah, I, the bow just did not react well. But I well, since, that's a yeah. Uh, I mean, that's the thing with weights is everybody's different. You know what I mean? Some guys like a little more back weight. Some guys like weight, you know, outside. You know, so it's that's totally yeah, it's understandable. Yeah. I mean, I I've had good luck with you know well even while well, last year at Lancaster and Vegas I I made my own weight because I felt like it was something better and mm -hmm. so Hoyt kind of took that design some of those ideas and put it in but yeah yeah everybody's different all right, all right bud back. let's see it let's 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 see what you're talking about all right that's the normal mm -hmm. oh, it's a little chewed up from tuning but that's the 70 millimeter profile and you can see oh, cut yeah. from point to point. And uh, I think that move right there really helped me that one year at target nationals. Cause I was like 20 some points down from first and uh, ended up winning by almost 20 because of the second day, because of a couple moves that I made that maybe the, uh, the other competitors were more reluctant to make. Um, but I think that could only have happened when we had that like 30 mile crosswind. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't know if it's people are reluctant or they don't know. I mean, you, you have an incredible amount of confidence that goes with making adjustments on the fly or experience that you can come to a tournament prepared for stuff like that. I think the bulk of people, I, I know that the vast majority of people don't shoot. I mean, maybe not right this moment, but coming leading up to nationals shoot as much as you do. You will get up, except for like Rick's no breaker. He travels all over the place and shoots. But like, you go and purposely seek out as much 72, 144 hour rounds as you can. You shoot in your yard. I see the pictures. I know what the scores are. Like, you don't, you, there, the lack, there is no lack of preparation. You know, and I don't, I don't, I honestly, John, both Johns, I don't, I don't know if people realize the amount of arrows that it takes to get to that point where you're you know exactly what your shot is you know exactly where your scores are you know exactly what your bow is going to do in certain you know situations and i can't i can't i've learned it on being involved in this and being around you guys long enough i try to emphasize that like to maggie for example she's hovering around like 8.5 to 9.0 average at 50 meters right now at 16 years old and yeah. But she shoots four days a week, minimal. And like, and I told her, I was like, there's, there's a reason for that because you're putting in the work. If you don't put in the work, you can't expect the scores. But that, you know, that's a little, little side discussion or, or a little off topic, but I guess, I, well, sort of, that sort of goes into tournament. But is there anything else you wanted to show with those arrows before we move into that? No, I just, Nope. I mean, that, that's good um, but, stuff. There, but there was a question on uh, the project page about shooting in the wind. You want to bring yeah, that up? Yeah, I saw that too. Yeah, I can bring that up a while. Um, we do a while. That. Well, we'll talk about that. Well, because we'll tournament prep this discussion, but we'll, we'll get toward the end and talk about that. Um, your, let's see. Your regional, your regional dialect is coming out yeah. a while. That's all right. Uh, so we had a question from Trevor Davey on the I'm, – I'm, I'm choosing to ignore you right now. Um, it says, when shooting with the wind behind me, I notice some of my arrows appear to knuckleball. I'm not sure how else to describe it. Um, how do you – how do the pros – I don't know any pros, Dillinger. Do you know any pros? <laughs> no. Oh, okay. 
how the pros deal with this. Uh, maybe they have other tips for dealing with wind in general. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming knuckleball, he means we got some this going on. Yeah. Uh, usually knuckleball means you got two things out of whack. You got spine and, and uh, knock height. Uh, but they're not – if it's a really bad knuckleball, they're probably both way out. But if it's just a little one, they're probably just both a smidge. Tailwind is probably the easiest wind to shoot in because it's – the wind's blowing right towards the target. The hardest one is the headwind when it's blowing right in your face because then if you got it any can be imperfections – high or low. If you got any imperfections in your arrow tune – it's going to be brutal downwind um, or downrange in the headwind. Side to side to side is pretty predictable. You just do what Dilly does, zam off or or cant it a little bit, cant into the wind just a smidge. Um, tailwind and headwind, there's really not much you can do except for just make really good shots. I think tailwind is very easy to shoot into. It's I think it's just as easy as no wind. Uh, yeah. But the headwind is a bugger. You you got to make sure your stuff's on point. Make sure your tune's on point. I mean, I don't know what else to, to say about shooting into that. Yeah. Well, I mean, swirling that's... wind. The, the, I think the swirling wind is, is, is you got wind and then no wind and then it's changing directions. And we fought some of that last year. Yeah, last year it was, was annoying wind. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't it was... bad. It was just annoying. <laughs> sometimes <laughs> I mean, headwind, sometimes left wind. Downrange. Look at look at the flags. Um, that'll tell you what you need to know. Really is. Um, so uh, that's just keep you have wind socks so you can kind of get an idea of how hard it's blowing down there too sometimes where you're standing the wind's not blowing that bad but you look down there and it's ripping pretty good so um just learn to to shoot in the wind and what to do so you're not nervous about it just everybody else has the same conditions so that was i think that was made the biggest difference for me the last couple is previously if it was windy i was like i'm not going to go shoot that you know and then I was like, I, I better go shoot in it. So but learn what your arrow back. does in the wind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but that's all. I think you have to remember, you know, people talk about mental game and stuff like that. And that's kind of one of, that's a, that's a, a tournament, I don't know, call it prep, but it's definitely an idea. That if you have a rough arrow in the wind and it lands out in the six or the seven or maybe further, you have to understand that everybody else is dealing with those same conditions as well. Like it's not just you. It sucks for everyone. It's okay. Just keep shooting. And, you know, it's not the end of the world. You just don't know what's going to happen. Heck, in practice last year, we had a wind gust and I missed the target. And, you know, he was busting my stones, you know, but then the next day and I shot a group like this, like high 10, nine area, nine somewhere. It was a really excellent, but like, you can't, you can't get beside yourself over that stuff. Whatever happens, happens. It's just one of those things. Um, and the rain too, you know, do you want to go ahead, John? Oh, no, no, you could talk about the rain. I wanted to talk a little bit about um, like the tactics we use for setting up our gear. I know Dillinger dove into a little bit, but we never, never really got around into the knock or the, the, the fletching aspect. We talked, Dilly did talk a little bit about the point weight, trying to get some FOC in there. Okay. Um, but we never sure. did talk about the fletch. I get a lot of questions about fletch, you know, what, what fletch is used, what's ideal. And um, that would be something that would be pretty good to, to discuss. And then we'll talk about shooting in the rain or prepping yeah. for the rain. Sure. Let's, we'll go, go ahead. You, you, you run with that question or that uh, topic. So, I think Dillinger's in the same boat. I'll let him answer for himself in a minute. Um, I like like a happy balance. If I know there's not going to be any wind, I'll I'll stick with my bigger bigger veins and the small side. Like so, I'll shoot my XS seventies or my XS sixty highs. Um, that's about as big as I want to go for fifty meters. I don't like going anything bigger than two and three quarter inch or two and a half inch because they start to get the high the profile starts to get too high there's a lot more drag a lot more potential wind drag um and that's going to mess up with wind obviously and then it's going to mess up a little bit more with uh finger errors um so i like to stick around with that and i like to go as light as possible on on the rear end too i don't like super heavy veins um only because it makes my arrow just a little bit lighter 
Um, it focuses more of that energy in the point instead of the rear end, and I don't like my rear end getting blown around. Sorry, that <laughs> made me chuckle. Um, Dillinger, how about yourself? Yeah, I like uh, either tape on veins. Um, last year, honestly, like I said, I picked my arrows like two days before the before I we left. Talked about that. And I had, what are they called? They Hold like on, I'm gonna twenty five. They were twenty five year old spin wings of some kind. <laughs> Hold on, <laughs> they're still out here. <laughs> They were, magic, I mean, they, magic they man. were small. Yeah, they magic were small. Magic man veins. C Tech, something, something went out of business 50 years ago. <laughs> exactly. oh, like, he's they're like, made, I have, they're like, made in Japan. Of them. They're like, <laughs> in Japan. He probably got them off of some flippers from the bass fishing lures. He ordered these them little guys on. right here. These little, yeah. they're little, they're supposed to be tape on, but I glued them on. And they actually hold up pretty well, but they Just almost look like, on. yeah, I glue them on. You can glue them on either, but typically I would go with like excess wings or something like that. Some, but they're, they're not a huge profile, but they actually work pretty well. Um, like he said, just go, don't go too big of a, a profile because the wind is just going to blow it. Um, same thing with your knock, just try to go light on the back end of the arrow. I think this where arrow only weighs maybe 300 grains yeah. um, total. So I mean, it's not a not a heavy arrow, but oh yeah, yeah. arrow size too. You you said you shot VAPS last year. Yeah. Um, that's a, that's the other thing that we get asked a lot too is you know what arrows to use. I use the skinniest that you can feel comfortable with spending money on. Um, yeah, the better. I mean, I wouldn't go shooting any tank 23s or I wouldn't even shoot any game getter twenty one seven for Zernzak. Like yeah, Zernzak can. can he can get away with it. Um, even um, even my favorite RZs, maximum RZs, I wouldn't shoot at fifty, um, no. just because they get blown around quite a bit. It's, it's I can amazing. even tell a difference between the the three D HVs and which are like a hybrid diameter or two o four, and the VAPS. The the three D HVs get blown around quite a bit more. Yeah. You know, just go with the skinniest arrow you can get. Oh, Frank wants to be a power bottom now. Mm -hmm. uh, no. I shot the X Impacts. They're the first year. They're, they're not bad. They're not terribly expensive. Um, I do like the VAPs better, though, for sure. Um, you use, are you still using the, what, Nano Pros, John? The, yeah, I'm still using the Nano. The MPX. MPX. Yep. probably similar did you say what your point weight was i don't remember you saying that yeah mine's mine's 110 You're 110. i think that's I what these are i won't run anything lighter than 100 um usually it's 110 yeah that's the mine standard our points run for those arrows run between they're either uh 110 to 90s or 100 to 90s or 90s to 80s i always run the 110s they seem to get a little bit tighter Tighter grouping for me. Well, I tune it that way, and if I get a little bit of wind, that point pushes a little bit better than 90s or 80s or 70s. Um, I think we had a friend last year that went into the Target Nationals with like a 220 green arrow or 240 green arrow, and when we got that wind, you know, he paid for it and he learned a lesson. He's I don't think you're going to see him showing up with that kind of setup again. Tried to warn him in the. Tried to warn him. I know Grayson tried to. I tried to ahead of time, but you know sometimes you live and learn. Um, usually remember your lessons a little bit more that way. <laughs> John, do you do you guys bear shaft out to fifty meters when you're tuning? Uh, I very I do very rarely. Um, if my arrow's starting to fly really good, I will. Um, I I do a lot of close bear shafting. Like I'll do it at like five, five meters and I'll try to get that. The, what I'll try to do is say one of these is bear shaft. I'll shoot at five meters and I'll try to get the arrows to impact like this. So if they're like this, Going I know in my the same angle. Yeah. Yeah. I know if my, this way, my spine's off or if it's this way, my, my uh, knock points off. So I try to get them like, boom, perfect. You know, the same. And then if they're the same, it's usually really, really close, but I'll do that for my 50 meter crawl at five meters 
Um, so I'm getting the same tune out of my bow that I'm shooting way back there. And, and then if I feel spunky enough, I'll do it at like 30, 30 meters. I'll put a, maybe a tennis ball, you know, maybe a foot under the target and do the same thing. And then rarely I'll do it at 50, but you know, I'll do it once in a while. Like I'll do it. If I think I got my final tune really, really close, I'll do it and I'll plug one out there. And it's either, it's either going to make me cry or make me very happy. <laughs> <laughs> but it, if you're getting the groups, you probably have an idea that how good it's going to be anyway. Yeah. It's kind of, it's kind of weird though. Like I, I know if your, your tiller's off. Um, and what I mean by that is a lot of times I'll see um, some people shooting on the range, on the practice range. And when they shoot, let's see if we can get these, they're a little bit small. But those are my knock points. You can kind of see them there. And if your tiller, if your tiller tuning is off, what happens is your limbs are in balance. So when you shoot and you let go, you see a lot of this movement post shot. You know, a lot of up and down, really, really bad. And if you're trying to bear shaft tune with that going on, you can get really ugly results. Like that, that knock point will come out, even though your groups look good. The arrows coming out, your bow looks really good you'll get a lot over like real wonky where if your tiller was good, you know, there's no reason that air, that, that uh, bear shaft is like, I don't know, five, six feet away from the, from the bullseye where if you're not, if your tiller tunes off, it could, it could really throw things, you know, really squirrely and it might, might make you go nuts. Like it's done to me in the past where you start like, okay, you shoot 50 meters, your bear shaft, boom, it's in like, if you can go from 10 to one and then go negative two, <laughs> I had my arrows cut look like they're coming out. Great. I throw the knot, a bear shaft out there. Boom. I'm like in the negative two ring. So I, I, you know, that's obviously what normally you'd tell you is your knocks too high. So, you know, I bring it down. Boom. Negative two ring. I had it all the way to even. And you know, if it's at even, if you have an even uh, knock height, something's really screwed up unless you're shooting a drop away rest and net i was at even and it's like boom negative one ring i mean it was that low and and that's like a product of your just your bow's not set up right even though everything looks like it's it's good but you're you're trying to bear shaft at 50 meters and you're still something's still off on your bow it might end up being the right spine it's just your your limb timing isn't quite right um i know a lot of people overstress on that and my default answer is usually just tell them shoot zero and don't worry about it. It's not going to be that bad. But if you're like half inch off, like where I was trying my negative tune, I was at like negative three eighths and I, I'm at like positive a quarter or something right now. And that made a world of a difference. So, but I was like over a half inch off of what I should have been. But if you keep it in that zero, you're going to be in that safe range. Um, mm -hmm. But if you start to get, to be a very proficient archer, then I would play around with that tuning a little bit. So I do play, <laughs> to go back. I do bear chap once in a while at 50 meters, but like I said, it's either going to make me cry or make me really happy. <laughs> uh, I bet you a lot of people get so caught up on that stuff too, though. And they're, if they get bent out of shape over that and their form goes to crap because they're thinking about their tune and they're not shooting good shots. And then you're chasing the, uh, that, you're chasing your tail is what you're doing. You yeah, know, you can do that for indoor a little bit, but indoor you can still get away with sort of a crappy tune and get a decent score. 50 meters, yeah. it's not that way. Yeah, you, you can end up chasing a lot and spend a lot of time chasing. And when you're chasing, a lot of times your form goes to crap and mm -hmm. then you end up chasing two things. Um, but if you're, I would say if, if you think you're a good form shooter and you're shooting in you know if you start dabbling in the 620s or 630s then i would start really consider about you know really working your gear over pretty good but if you're you're still beginning or you're still getting used to it and you're in the 580s i would i would still focus on the the, the proper things instead of uh chasing you know instead of micromanaging your tune it's mm -hmm. a good point um let's I mean, you we handled a lot on like 
even with the pitfalls thing and, and stuff like that. Does, when it comes does this guy does this guy bear shaft fifty meters? Do I? Hey? No. Yeah. Oh, Frank? Dillinger. Do you dilly? Oh, you know, I'll I'll shoot one every like you one every once in a while just for fun. Just to see. But I'll I'll usually get back like 20, 30 yards, meters, whatever. And I and that'll tell you really what you need to know. But I'm just I'm always curious as to how low or right they impact. Because would you typically when I have a good tune, I'm a little bit low and a little bit right. And that kind of tells me that I'm kind of close to where I need to be, I feel like. Um, but yeah, I'll just do it for once, for fun every once in a while. You know, my target face, it's like a three foot circle. So if I miss, I'm screwed, but you know, I don't, I don't do it all the time. But I like you, I'll start at like five meters and then work my way back, um, you know, at 20, 30, and then, uh, you know, we'll go from there. But yeah, another, you know, it's tuning. You can, <clears throat> it takes a while to learn how to tune. And I think people need to be patient with that is you just need to experiment with a lot of different things and find out what works and doesn't work because what works for me may not <clears throat> work for everybody else, but you know, you just have to play with it. I mean, it sucks when you don't have, I think the biggest problem is people have is all right, I bought these 600 spine arrows and I'm going to make them work. And it's like, you know, you, if they're not working, maybe invest in some 500 spines and try those because, you know, it's everybody's on a budget, you know, but it's just, you know, switching spine of arrows makes a world of difference sometimes. And you think you have a good tune and you shoot a different spine and you're like, oh, okay, this is how, you know, this is, yeah. I like this better. My scores are better. So it is kind of nice having, you know, over the years, you can collect lots of different spines and links of arrows and points and, you know, so, I mean, these, these arrows are probably, and I shot these and these are probably three or four years old, you know, so, I mean, it's, it's, it's you know. It's nice to have that good base, like, if yeah. I was going to shoot, if I was going to tune for indoors, and I know I want to run, say, 150 grain points or 200 grain points, I just pick a weight, like, I yeah. like to run 150 if I can. Um, if I like to run 150, I'd like to have, I'll just find a good set of arrows. that's not like on the cheap, cheap end, but not a super expensive. And I'll buy like, if, if I can buy individuals, I'll buy like three, say I'll buy three, three fifties. I'll buy three, four hundreds, three, five hundreds, three, six hundreds. And then that's, I use that as my base for indoors. So I'm, I'm only investing in a dozen arrows, but I'm investing in a, a fairly cheap arrow, not the super cheap where you're going to be you know, sacrificing on, on materials and quality. Um, and the same thing I'll do for outdoors. Like if I want, ideally I'd like a 30 inch arrow because it it's short enough. I could get some speed and I can get 50 meters no matter what. Um, but it's not too short. I'm shooting my arrow inside the, inside the sight window where if I get some weird shade coming down, I, I can still see my arrow because it's sticking out past the riser. Um, I'll have a, a, again, something like Dillinger, like if I shot VAPS, I would have like, I'd get a bunch of V3s. I'd get like, you know, a 600 spine, a 500 spine and a 400 spine <clears throat> and maybe a 700, but I'd only get like three of those and I'd use them as my base. I cut them down to where I think I want them to be like through, you know, uh, 30 inches and I'll shove like one tens in them. And then that's going to be my base. And I'm going to set them aside for now to the end of time that's going to be whenever I get out to my 50 meter game, I'd grab those arrows because sometimes our form changes every year. Sometimes an arrow works one year and it doesn't work the other way. The other year, cause our fingers are working different or, you know, we got an injury or something's going on that we might not always use the same spine every year. Um, but I'd grab them out of my, my bag of tricks and I'd shoot them. Okay. This one's flying good. This one's flying better. This flying, this one's going worse. So, okay, this is the spine I need. This is what I'm going to tune and this is what I'm going to roll with. And then when it comes down to buying the arrow that I want, I already know this is the spine. Yeah, that's really good that's, advice. But, but that's, a, that's a hard thing about tuning 50 meters too is 50 meters is definitely a little bit more in depth because you're, you're going to be a little bit more critical. You're, a lot of times you're working with a, a more finicky arrow like indoors we can load up the point weight and we can get away with a lot of stuff indoors um outdoors you can't do that and and that's what dillinger is saying sometimes it takes a while to find a good tune 
because also when we're trying to set up a bow 50 meters a lot of times it's after we've t- taken a break from indoors so our mm-hmm. form's changing a little bit we're getting a little bit stronger and like things just kind of change on us while we're we're working a tune so i don't even bother tuning for two three weeks until i get my i'll get an arrow that flies halfway decent and then i'll just shoot for like three weeks and work on form. That's a, and when it's yeah. when that form's good then i tune you'll know too when you get to that point where your form is start starts to settle down you'll find that tune because your groups will be good even if you don't have a great shot you you'll have a shot that's maybe not like you know it's like a seven or an eight on a scale of ten and that arrow won't be out at you know far right field it'll still be a decent hitting arrow when you get that forgiveness from a good tune um, and you can find that indoors too when you get like a final tune and you're just you know they're just slam and slam and slam and slam and then it's like oh and it's a mini collapse or something like that but it's not that far out you know you'll know when when that happens but i honestly think that i don't think a lot of a lot of people struggle to get to the point where their form is consistent enough to say hey i got a really good 50 meter tune i think you get a decent tune and then just work on form is what you know, you see and hear and read online and, you know, they're, they're trying to work on tune, but yet, you know, you're, you're flinching and fucking like crazy, or you're doing this, or you're thinking all these million things in your head. And, you know, again, we're, we're starting to get down those rabbit holes and chasing our tail, trying to figure things out. And, but that's, that's some, that's a really good way john that you brought up like getting like three of a kind which you can do i think i know lancaster is one of the few that sells singles i don't know who else does you know but get the v3 not the v1 but get the v3 get the points you only need one pack of points get four different spines and then run with it from there you know and then on your plunger you know we've had i've had instances i don't think so much for outdoor but i have an indoor where yeah, I thought I had to go to a stiff spring. I ended up going to a light spring, not realizing that whatever I was doing or whatever the setup was at the time, it was the opposite of what I thought it was. Don't ever be afraid to try that. And John Demmer, you're the one that told me that. Like, don't be afraid to try that. You never know what's going to happen. If you're doing something different with your form or the bow is just acting different or, you know, you're switching things up, don't be afraid to play. But make sure that once you get it set, I mean, except for Demmer, he plays different all the way up until the week before. No, he's tuning as the shoot's <laughs> going on. <Yeah. laughs> I've seen him do that. <laughs> I've seen he's him over take there the plunder off, cranking move on, it, put it back on. <laughs> Never again. <laughs> I tried that once, and I'm complete ended up at a complete failure we'll never do it again <laughs> we, we had to pick him out of the street corner oh, <laughs> later that I, night i wanted to just <laughs> i wanted to bang my head off of a curb i was so i was so pissed off at myself for doing that um you guys want to look at some of these, the, the the rest of those questions real quick sure um yeah. we could we can go we i know we glossed over it really really quick but we didn't really touch upon it, it was um we talked about wind shooting in the wind. We didn't talk about shooting in the rain yet. Um, mm-hmm. I use the Dillinger approach. If if it's windy, go out and shoot because you want to figure out how it's going to react and you need to prepare for it. Same thing with rain. Um, if for me, if it's raining and I haven't shot in the rain in a long time, I'll put my rain jacket on because it, this is key. Mm-hmm. Put your gear on that you're going to shoot in the rain and shoot it because there might be something going on that you didn't foresee, um, like a rain jacket. If it's raining hard and we're shooting, we're going to keep shooting as long as there's not thunder and lightning. Um, put your rain jacket on. Find a good form-fitting rain jacket. You know, be one of them. Be one of those dorks that are shopping for rain jackets and go out in the store and, you know, do this right in front of everybody, you know. Make sure yeah. everything's nice and tight. Um <laughs> My, my sleeves will be a little bit loose, but I'll grab a basketball shooting sleeve and I'll put it over top of my rain jacket so that stays nice and tight. But definitely yep. practice in the rain because your arrows are going to impact different. You got to figure out where they're going to impact before you shoot that arrow or you're going to be shooting a pile. It could be a pile of sixes or fives or fours, uh, mm-hmm. depending on how heavy the rain is. Yeah, and don't you can don't buy frog tog uppers that are like real stiff. You can get those as lowers, but don't buy those as your as your as your upper. 
Um, I think last I bought a Columbia, you know, regular raincoat, but instead of using the basketball sleeve, I bought the boning, you know, the boning slip on arm guards. They work just as good as well. Basically the same thing. You can slide those wherever and put them wherever to keep. Um, the other thing I've seen is I think I actually saw Paige Pierce did this, um, uh, just a paper clip or a, like a big binder clip and you, with your jacket loose, you can take that, scrunch it up here, use the binder clip right here, just in a pinch to keep that tight against your arm. You know what I mean? Stuff mm -hmm. like stuff like that works for, for that awkward, but have, have extra towels that are dry. Have, um, you, you have a nice little trick with the, the bag. This. Mm -hmm. Now there is a new product that's not on the market yet that I talked to you about, which that stuff's been out, but that, I have video. They used it on a on a on a three three under tab. Sprayed the tab, water runs right off. It does not get wet at all. So I'll have to talk to that person about it. Don't you, you might already have some. If you don't, I'm sure you'll have some coming your way at some point in time. <laughs> um, but it's that it's it's actually pretty impressive stuff. And and you can spray that on your strings as well, and just feeds right off. You do not get wet at all. That's something that we can talk about. We can kind of go into the tournament prep thing or talk about the rain or what you're going to expect in the rain because remember, was it two years ago when Grayson was shooting somewhere down in VA and it was like torrential downpours and he's shooting boom, boom, hitting middle, hitting middle, all of a sudden torrential downpour. And then he was like, he shot a group like this down in like the five or yeah. down in the four. You know, just from the, the 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 string getting wet, the actual rain coming down and pushing the arrows down, and he was like, "What in the world happened?" And you know, made a quick adjustment. But be prepared for that, everyone. You know, don't don't just don't just shoot when it's nice out. Go experience it, see what it's like, make sure you're prepared for it. So I like a rain jacket with waterproof zippers. And if it's going to be raining pretty hard, I'll have a couple plastic baggies yep. and I'll have like paper towels in both of them. So that, that usually can get me through two, two bags can get me through a, a, a good shooting session. And I'll, I'll stick like one paper towel in the one bag. And when I'm done, I'll quick, just take this and throw it in that baggie with that paper towel. And I'll just let it sit in there until I'm ready to shoot again. I'll quick pull that out and zip up the, uh, zip up the zipper. And then when that one gets wet, I'll take another uh, dry towel, put it in there. And that usually keeps mine pretty good for hours. I shot uh, down in uh, media one year. I think you know, we shot in the rain for like seven hours. I think we had like four inches of rain. Oh. My, tab was, my tab was fine. Um, that's the other thing that you're going to have to figure out on your shooting style. Um, Dillinger has a different hook than I do. Um, my, my hook, I know works extremely well in the rain. Um, I have a pretty deep hook. So what, what that means is I'm, I'm back here pretty good and I'm hooked pretty hard. Like I have it, I have it hooked like really hard like this. So if I'm shooting in the rain, which is great for, um, both dry and rain. Um, if I'm shooting in the rain, this thing doesn't slip. I don't get any like, you know, quick slips. Where some people, if they're shooting on their fingertips, they get in the rain, they shoot in the rain, they kind of like, they're kind of screwed, to be honest with you. They're going to have probably, you know, a good handful of just slips because it does get a little bit slick. The tab does get a little bit slick with the rain. Um, so that's something that you might see if you go out in the rain and practice is a little bit of finger slippage if you shoot with your fingertips. Um, so I, I, I hook deep, so I, I avoid that. I'm kind of somewhere in between. I mean, this top finger is usually out a little bit, but I'm actually gripping with these two pretty deep. Um, like Paul I've Donnelly really had an issue with that. Uh, I don't know. Does he do that? Uh, well, Paul's this front top finger is completely straight. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. funny. Yeah. Uh, um, but another that. thing, no Frank, question. you can tell him about this is probably waterproof shoes. Uh, well, a good I was idea. all right last year with that with that <laughs> I had, but I won't be going back with that. I can tell you that <laughs> they were they were no, right. They were just fishing shoes. Dude, that, that wet it, shoes for three days is not fun. So it's, bring it's nice some to good be comfortable. <laughs> waterproof boots or waterproof shoes. Yeah, Preferably what do you guys? Not, 
Preferably not have... twelve hundred gram muck boots in the <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> Just yeah. What kind of boots you have, throw... Danner? I'd... Oh, what were your I boots? They're just water Danners or something boots. like that. Oh, okay. mine. Yeah, didn't you buy some? You bought brand new ones last year. Oh, I got some new Keens. I like the Keens. Keens that's what it they was. seem to be pretty good. But we had to. I had to throw some shoes away. I think Dimmer can remember that. I had them in the back of the <laughs> rental car. It set in the sun all day. It was oh awful. my gosh! It's not like a dead animal in there. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, just normal stuff for planning on being out in the rain all day because you know it takes hours for these shoots. You know, especially if you're shooting team events and stuff like that. So it's miserable having wet feet. And people still show up with tennis shoes, and I don't know how they do it because my feet would be raw <laughs> after three days of that. So yeah, and that field um, down there just be prepared. The water, you're walking yeah. in water. That's not you're not. It's not you know where it's running off. That field gets wet and squishy, and you know, um, yeah. That's and I again. So I did not have any last year, just to tell my experience. I did buy some like Columbia, um, like fishing shoes. So they weren't bad to be completely honest. They did dry quick enough, but they, they like the water drains out of them They're for the deck of a fishing boat. Um, <laughs> but the second day I was like, yeah. And it was more rain. It was like, it was like worse. Or I, I was like, yeah, Dilly, you mind if I, uh, mind if I use your, your extra set of shoes? Like, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> So he wears like an 11 and I wear like a 12. So my toes are like killing me. I'd still take that over, you know, the alternative. So it wasn't, it wasn't yeah. too bad. It wasn't too bad. Not at all, really. You just don't really need just any conditions to mess with your head. You know, yeah. I mean, it's, it sucks there, being there cold and wet and, yeah. you know, so you just want, you want to be comfortable and you don't want to be miserable out there. That's for sure. But, yeah. So how about continuing on the tournament prep discussion? What do you guys do to prepare as far as shooting? Like where, like right now, John, we're over a month out. What, you know, what are you doing? Are you shooting high volume? Are you shooting 10 arrow ends? Are you just really focusing on getting back into it and working on tune? Where are you at on that? Uh, yeah, I'm just working, getting back at it right now. Just started messing around with tune last week. Um, maybe even I would say the tail end of last week was really starting to play with tune. Um, I'm trying to get out there and shoot when I can. It's been tough. The garden still, it's it's almost close to maintenance free as possible, as maintenance free as it can can get. So I'll start to have some more time pretty soon. Um, but I'm trying to right now shoot like three or four rounds a week. That's probably the schedule I'm on now with one or two days of just messing around and just work on strength. Um, so I'll have right now like one day a week where I'm shooting like 10 or 12 and 12 arrow ends. Um, not too worried about focusing on score, just trying to make good form shots and try to do 12 arrows of great form shots per end and work on strength a little bit that way. Um, in a couple weeks, uh, probably going to keep it the same, probably do like five, five rounds of practice scored and then a little bit of volume just to, to work out on some strength at, at the end of the scoring round. Billy, how about yourself? Oh, normally I would be about the same, like three to four days, evenings a week. Um, maybe, you know, two hours at a time. Um, where I go, I mean, we, we don't have like a 50 meter range around here. So I usually just go up in the national forest and set up a portable target. Um, there's like three or four different places I like to shoot, you know, so exposed to the wind all the time, like I said, so I'm up there in the, in the wind shooting, but, um, and then, you know, leading up to it, I would try to shoot every day, if not every other day you know i liked it i like it so when i show up to a shoot i'm not even tired when i'm shooting you know what i mean you kind of honestly have to be in shooting shape which sounds stupid but you know what i mean and if you're in the middle of a competition you're like i'm not even tired 
So, and I see a lot of people are, you know, kind of struggling sometimes with, you know, strength issues, you know, cause they're, maybe they haven't shot as much as, you know, and it's, it's almost like one of those things where, you know, you're building up to something. So you kind of, um, you know, I know Dimmer has a routine. He's kind of, kind of the same way you try to peak. And I, I know there's terminology for all that, you know, so it's, oh, it's kind yeah. of, you have to listen to your body. Yeah. You have to listen to your body. You know what yeah. I mean? Um, you know, don't shoot if, you know, if you're injured or honestly, the days that I'm not shooting that well, I'll just bag it up and go home. Cause I'm like, so you're just going to have days like that. Don't keep mm -hmm. shooting. It may just, you know, make it worse. Um, but yeah, you got to put in the reps. And I think it's one of those things where, you know, guys like us, we've been shooting so long, we don't have to shoot the thousands of arrows now. You know what I mean? Like Denver hasn't been shooting very much. He's been fishing, you know, but he may shoot, you know, a couple hundred arrows a day and within a shorter amount of time than a normal person who's just maybe starting, he's back where he needs to be. You know what I mean? He's already shot that hundred thousand shots or whatever it is, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of it is muscle memory and it's mental. And so I think that's <clears throat> what a lot of people don't see is, He's already, you know, done it time and time and time again, where it doesn't take him much time to get back into good shooting form and shape. Um, so new person, you know, you got to put in the reps, you got to shoot the million arrows or whatever it is, you know, to, to get to like Denver's level. But I'm sure there's quite a few people out there that would that could kick my butt and probably Denver's butt, you know, if they had the, the drive to, to practice as much as they should and, you know so just that's my advice is just just go shoot you know don't make excuses get out there and shoot there's a lot of times where i'd rather be doing something else i'd rather be fishing shooting but you, you kind of have to do it if you're going to invest all this you know time and money to do something just do it yeah well i mean and usually you know i mean i get out there and I start shooting i'm like yeah i made the right choice this is fun you know so it's it's just getting out the door sometimes yeah i don't think we talked about that a little bit early on, but I mean, you, you set yourself up for whatever your goal is. If your goal is to win target nationals, if you're not thinking about what you should be doing right this moment, you're already behind the eight ball. Um, it doesn't mean that you need to be shooting, you know, six fifties right now, but it means that like you need to be working on something you said about if like you're having a bad day, you'll just bag it up. You know, if you have the option, you know, maybe it's not, it's one of those days where you still want to get the volume in, go do some shooting drills, go do yeah. some blind bits. Yeah. Don't, don't like walk away from it, throw your hands in the air, in the air and be like, ah, screw it. You know, go do something that's productive because that might be the catalyst that gets you back on track for the next time you go to shoot, you know, don't, don't just walk away from it. Um, no, John, I don't, I'm kind of the personality. If I have a bad day, I'm the ne you know the next time I go shoot, I'm like, all right, I'm gonna figure out what's wrong. You uh, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, I don't okay. mean it as I quit. You know, I mean it as I just some days I feel like I'm not doing any good just shooting a couple hundred arrows. You know what right. I mean? And mm -hmm. you just need to mentally reset sometimes, walk away, and then you know come back. And it's usually a day or two later, and I'm right back where I need to be. You know, so it's. You know, and you just try to figure out what it was that, you know, caused you to do that. Sometimes it's just your head's not in the right place or you're not focused or, you know what I mean? It's been a long day at work and it's, it's really hard to put your finger on things like that. I know Denver can attest to this too, is like, I've had nights where I've got like two hours of sleep and I can shoot out of my mind the next day. And then the next day I'll, you know, have a nice eight, nine hours of sleep and I can't hit a target so it's like but i you know it's like it's not my eight is it it's a, it's a strange thing you know it's um yeah i don't know where i'm going with that but it's just it's always fascinated me as you know it's just things like that well why did i shoot so good that day and i just i can't put my finger on it it's just mental you know it's the it's the mental side of it is the only thing i can think of yeah um anything else you want to talk about there jd3 before we we'll get to these last two questions from well, trevor 
if if I'm not if I'm not having a, a a great day, and it's just I'm either starting or I'm halfway through what I normally would, I'll stop. Like, I'll I'll do like a hybrid between you guys, and I'll just stop scoring, and then I'll just put in some volume work and just do some form work. Okay, what part of what part of going on right now is do I think is the culprit? All right, if I'm not focusing on my follow through. Then I'll shoot the next like 50 arrows focusing on follow through and not, not care where they're landing. You know, I'll still aim, but I won't be too intent on that. I'll try to get that subconscious mind kicking into what my uh, follow through should be. So when I'm getting a little lackadaisical, I'll, they'll, hopefully my body will just revert to that muscle memory. That's yeah. usually where my struggles are is, is I'm, not, I'm not focused on the right thing. Yeah, and you do you do things like as almost like self punishment. Like if you're you're doing something, you'll do like a like long hold as you call them. And yeah, I'll a do a long hold, hold right on the line during the tournament. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I've done that before too. I don't well, not like a minute, but I wouldn't no. go more than like three or five seconds because you're just gonna burn yourself out. But you still have to shoot another arrow. Um, yeah, my best score I've ever shot in a 50 meter tournament. I did one all every end for a half i did one every end for the half so i would start every end with a draw hold i'd put it there and hold it there and count the five you know and that was when i was still shooting like mini drive-bys i actually put the tip of the arrow in the middle now but and and it just sits there but you know it took me forever to understand what you and grayson were saying by like just put it there just put it there just put it there and leave it there and you know my 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 release is dialed back like i don't have this big huge and what i realized is if you just put it there and leave it there and we're i talked i talked with zernback a little bit about this earlier today let the bow do the work let the bow do what it's supposed to do you're just you're just part of the system you're part of the the what's happening but you're not the one that's really doing the work it's the bow so take yourself as far out of that that you know, formula as possible, hold it and let the bow do its work. You don't have to add anything to it. And I used to add so much extra stuff into my form that it was just more that I had to repeat, more that I had to try to work on, more that and you're like, man, it's hard enough. Why do I keep adding all this extra stuff in? And, you know, why are these guys like, like Dwayne Martin and you, both of you, Grayson, that don't have these big fluid releases and these big, huge bow arms, they just sit there. And then when the release goes, when, when the subconscious happens and that release happened and there's not, there's, it's just a little pink and everything stays on the good, on the good shots, obviously. Like, why are they doing that? Why can't I do that? Well, you can, you just need to change your form and realize, stop trying to shoot like you're shooting an Olympic recurve because that's what people see. And that's what they then try to repeat. And, you know, that, that has been a game changer for me since going back kind of to my old form but committing to i'm taking myself out of this the less involved i am and and just letting the bow do the work the better off i'm gonna be and it's made a it's made a huge impact and just even on my like the mental side of it like i don't i'm not as stressed out about my form because it's super super simple now and, did, did you try to do the head bob thing yet <laughs> i don't know oh uh, no, anyway, I don't. You mean this it works? Thing? Yeah. Thing? No, I'm, I I decided to blink instead. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Bobblehead. Maybe that's why I didn't shoot that well this year. Maybe I wasn't doing the bobblehead right. Are you still you anchoring shot, forward? Are you, you still you forward, shot, Dilly? You shot yeah. the open pretty good, you bugger. Yeah, you did. <laughs> Your indoors yeah, just was, sucked, but I, well, <laughs> you yeah, this... shot pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, hopefully I can get this thing healed up. Um, I only have two kids playing baseball right now, so I need to get the bow out and start shooting that. Get ready for field nationals. As long as my work schedule cooperates, we should be able to do that. Uh oh, it looks like all my my family's coming home, so it's about to get really loud in here. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> We like your family. You go get that Gratston scraping done, man. I'm telling you, that stuff works. Are they what? Are they 
the Gratzen scraping. You ever hear of it? It's like a uh, myofascial muscle manipulation. They go with like a brass knuckle, but it's got a curved, like a curved edge on it that's rounded a little yeah. bit. And they put, you know, like a tiger bomb type thing on it. And they get in there and they'll manipulate those muscles all around. Create like they, they break up the adhesions and then the blood flow helps heal the area. If you don't have a tear, that will work. I don't think I do. I mean, it feels, it feels, this is the best it's felt in months. So we'll, we'll see. I'll probably um, start out light and then go from there. Take a little weight off the riser. And... He's going to hop in his kayak and pull a muscle and start all over. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been able to go. My truck's been broken down. So oh, no, yeah, I got to get that fixed. Um, Put it on top of the van. <laughs> yeah, might have to do that. Say, mama, you're um, dropping me off at the lake before you go. <laughs> doesn't he have a trailer for that thing if i remember correctly oh yeah yeah so you can hook the trailer to the back of the minivan with all fifteen thousand kids go drive down the down to the lake and and just drop the trailer <laughs> with you in the kayak i could see you in the kayak behind the van now that would be fun. that would be funny i've got like a little hybrid now that i drive around and i'm thinking about putting a trailer hitch on the back of that so i think that'd be Maybe. hilarious <laughs> oh my gosh oh, little, put, the, put the european Prius. put the little european trailer hitch on the back <laughs> i thought about it <laughs> yeah yeah it that. looks like that <laughs> yeah I, I, they're, they're hilarious um but yeah I, you guys have any more questions I, I probably need to wrap this up no you if you got to get going no worries we'll we'll look at these last two that trevor had and then we're going to call it a night was there anybody right. Anybody even bother posting anything on Facebook Live? We, I'll tell you, we had a lot of viewers, to be honest with you. Um, well over 30, surprisingly. Um, that's pretty a, good a, for like 8 billion people in the world. <laughs> that's awesome, isn't it? No, 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 no questions, believe it or not. Just the ones that Trevor had submitted prior to, to okay. us uh, Let's recording. Let's bang them out real quick. All right. So number one, uh, I have a 50 meter crawl. What would be the most beneficial adjustment that I should make to make my air to for my arrow to reduce the crawl and improve scores? Longer arrows, heavier arrows, heavier tip, bigger fletchings. I think you kind of covered all that already. Yeah, we covered that. Earlier. Moral so, of the story down. is don't worry, don't worry about distance. As long as you can hit 50 meters, crawl if you have to. You mm -hmm. know, as long as you don't have like a four inch crawl, it's not going to really make a huge difference this one's a good one um what are some tips or tricks you use to stay focused every shot of the round i'm thinking somewhere between ends six and nine and your mind keeps wandering off um this is actually a good one i think it's a common mistake but why don't you guys talk about like where where does your focus go or maybe lack thereof like he is right now <laughs> Oh, I mean, do you ever do you ever lose your lose your mind? I'm like, oh. go ahead, Dimmer. Uh, it's tough. That's the hardest part. <laughs> three three D is super easy because it's like one arrow every 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. Or if you shoot like the uh, European three D, it's two arrows like every fifteen twenty minutes. It's not that hard. Yeah. Um, indoor air indoor is I think it's easier to stay focused. Outdoor is kind of a pain because you're shooting. Um, a little bit more arrows, but you're shooting more in succession before you take a break. Um, it's really hard. I, I, I can't say I have a trick um, personally. Um, it's more of just choosing to do it um, and sticking with it. So, mm -hmm. but no, I, you I shoot can, a lot I, faster I can tell you, than I do outdoors. Yeah, I can tell you, I don't succeed in that all the time, that's for sure. Yeah. But that's for me, that's how I have to do it. Is I have to, I have just have to do it mm -hmm. daily how about you um yeah that's that's the trick um you know just take it one arrow at a time you know like they always say i know Demmer shoots a lot faster than i do he'll be done with his arrows and i'll still i've only shot three you know i'll take the the full time limit you know just because you know, I don't want to wear myself out, but whatever works for a person, you know, some people shoot really fast and some people like, you know, to take their time and focus on breathing. That's another thing is people feel like people don't 
you know, focus on enough is because you're up there and your heartbeat, heart rate gets up, you know, you need to breathe, take deep breaths, and just focus on it, you know, have your system, mm -hmm. you know, your draw cycle, make sure you're not skipping any steps, don't rush anything, just, you know, I mean, you can't, another thing, I mean, we talked about the wind a lot, you can't outweigh the wind, you know, I mean, if you've got time, you might, if there's a big gust, you, of course, you want to let down and, you know, you know, but it's, you also don't want to run out of time. So, but just, you know, just try to be in the shot. And I think, you know, for some reason, I'm able to block out a lot of things when I'm shooting, you know, my mm -hmm. wife, I, maybe that's just my, my nature is she'll be calling my name and she's like, I called your name three times and you're not even, you know, <laughs> so I just, I just mentally drift off sometimes, which may be good or bad. I don't know, but um, yeah, just find something that works and, but I just, you know, just this one arrow at a time. Yeah. You know, another I, thing is, which I ran into this in the past, is bring snacks. Because if I get hungry, I lose focus really quick. And I swear I've, I've shot not my best because I've been hungry on the shooting line and rather than eating a granola bar. And I've been bumming. I think I've bumped food off a of dimmer before because I've showed up and left all my snacks back in the hotel room. <laughs> Yeah, he so, shows no, up with really. that big Yeti bag, and there's just grapes yep. and nuts and this and that <laughs> and this and that. Gummy bears. Gummy yeah. bears. Yeah. Even but, well, at, at a bare minimum, get some sugar in your system because you're gonna burn yeah. through it. Yeah. Sugar and you won't even realize water. it. You'll you won't even realize it until it's over, and you're like, man, I, I was hungry. I should have eaten something. But yeah, I had lots of snacks and stuff like that. I mean, you'll have time between ends to to snack on stuff. And this well, that's is usually not just outdoor either. That's indoor too. Indoors, yeah. is, it, you got to do it indoor. And and if you notice that you are hungry, that's usually a sign that it was you should have done something like thirty minutes ago. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's a really good. Point. I'm glad you brought that up. Stay um, stay hydrated too. That's gonna help. Yeah. Focus too. What happened? Did you uh, have an issue a couple of years ago? Yeah, perchance. <laughs> but, yeah it's, 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 it's probably going to be hot and it's going to be humid and you're going to be sweating so yeah make sure you're hydrated um, it's not drink when you're thirsty it's mm -hmm. drink a little bit the entire time you yeah. come back from an end just take a sip it doesn't have to be a big you don't want to be running the bathroom all the time, but you know take a sip go shoot come back take a sip go shoot come back every other end whatever so that you don't end up having to go to the bathroom the entire time. You like chug a bottle of water and 15, 20 minutes later, you're trying to run the job Johnny that's 50, 70, 60 yards away from your target assignment. You know, you don't get, you know, you can, it's, that's a pain in the butt. I'd rather, you know, get there in time so that you can do that stuff, have the water ready, use the bathroom before you shoot and then come back and get ready to start your practice. And, you know, don't, don't, forget that aspect i guess is is really the thing in regards to i, I did want to comment on it but in regards to um like when you start losing your brain i i mean i honestly i am notoriously notorious for like a checklist stance feels right hook feels right grip feels right stand up straight good posture and run through like and continuing to run through trying to perfect those steps if I'm concentrating on those steps correctly, it doesn't allow my mind an opportunity to wander into that other stuff. What, what my biggest, like my personal struggle is if I shoot a crappy arrow, I need to leave that crappy arrow behind and move on and shoot the next one as good as I can. And that's like, if you, if you can go revert back to concentrating on the steps, it's easier to leave that stuff behind. Forget about it just the same if you just shot a 58 hey good job move on because you can't be all excited and then anticipate oh well i want to shoot a 58 again well you didn't you didn't shoot the 58 by just wanting it you shot a 58 by taking the right steps or or concentrating on the right things to shoot the shot the right way and you know so if you keep your mind occupied on those things and, and i'll tell you another thing that i just did a, a i have an archery coach cast that i do with Larry Wise and, and Doc, and we did uh, Dick Tone. He's out here. Well, he's not in Utah, but he's, he's out your way, Billy. He's Casey Coffold's coach. And he said, he was like, 
I highly mm -hmm. recommend shooters do something. I mean, talking to everybody is good, but do something in between ends that keeps you occupied. Don't think about archery. You know, he was talking about Jay Bars when in the, uh, I think the 84 Olympics, you know, he was known. There's that iconic video of him with his spiked hair, headphones, a Walkman, and he's jamming out in between sessions, like on an air guitar and shooting that yellow Hoyt gold medalist. And like, and I, I did a podcast with Jay and he talked about, it. he's like, I did that. So I didn't think about Archie. Because that's why I'm, I'm, I'm shooting in the Olympics. I don't want to think about anything other than, I only want to think about my arrows when I have to get up there. I'm going to get up there, I'm going to shoot them, and I'm going to sit down, and I'm going to forget about them. And, yeah. you know, that, that's, that's, you find your thing. If it's talking to others, great. It's listening to music, reading a book, playing a game on your phone. I watched Brady Ellison do that, the classic, when I shot with him in 2017. You know, he'd come back. I was playing, I, I started doing the same thing. He's playing like a four wheel drive game on his phone. Not talking to anybody, not even his coach, not nobody. Just come back. So like occupy your brain in between. Don't be low, you know, being all bent out of shape. You'll, you you'll wear yourself out. I think you mentally, mm -hmm. you'll just appear. If you're thinking about shooting the entire time that you're at an archery shoot, you'll just be mentally exhausted. I mean, we talk about fishing and everything, you know, when we're back off the, you know, off the shooting line, we're not talking about shooting, <laughs> you we're know, on, we're, you on, we're, on fish, to... we're on fish brain trying to find the next spot we're fishing that night. <laughs> yeah, yeah. After the pretty tournament, much. where are we going fishing? We'll try yeah, to find some I mean, heads. you'll, you'll be mentally exhausted if you can't, you know, it's almost like, you know, I get away from the shooting line. If, even if I have a bad end, I want to talk about something else or think about something else, you know, it's, I think you'll just be mentally drained if you're just archery, archery, you know, the entire mm -hmm. time. Wasn't it, who, which one of you was the one that almost got swept down the river last year? Billy, wasn't it you? Oh, both? you? oh I don't know. Probably both oh, of us. Oh. That was crazy. I was swimming <laughs> with my fishing pole over my head to get out to this rock, and it was it was flowing pretty good. You but... see the headlines now. <laughs> <laughs> two, two, two archers from USA Archery lost down river in the middle of a national tournament. What? That, yeah. that yeah. day sucked. We didn't even catch a fish. I know. That was horrible. Oh, you got I just wanted That's to get out to that rock. Did. Not that day. <laughs> and then we went, not on that then, river. I specifically remember that river that. sucked. <laughs> <laughs> Scott took us to that, that reservoir thing, and there's people everywhere, and there's yeah. algae everywhere he's like oh yeah this this will be good this will be good <laughs> we're good we didn't catch anything <laughs> don't you're gonna miss out man we're going snakehead fishing yeah i know <laughs> <laughs> i wish i could go guys yeah well that's only because his wife's standing nearby uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh she's she's took the blender back to our bedroom to turn it on so she, <laughs> that's hilarious she's a rock star thank you yeah she's, she's really good all um, right well i think we covered everything um that we really needed to talk about so i know if you're on a timeline there you got to get going dillinger it's all good I yeah i appreciate it thing. guys it was really good catching up with you yeah. um best of luck to both of you guys um so i'll be i'll be watching the uh u.s open finals i hope with you guys in it that'd be cool thanks man appreciate yeah, appreciate dude. you appreciate you coming on even though you're not um, you're not making the the trip though but we'll miss you for sure yep. definitely i'll see you guys um, next time all right sounds good man and everybody else thanks for joining in and watching Hi. there there's she is time. there's the boss <laughs> <laughs> they say you're a rock star tanya oh, <laughs> um, for those who, who did join in on Facebook and uh, are watching and eventually thank you guys who, who submitted questions and if there's other questions or you guys any you know something we didn't cover or something you want to know when we post the, the video uh, on YouTube by all means we'll, we'll try to answer them or we'll answer the next podcast um, and that's pretty much it we appreciate it Demer, it's nice seeing you kind of. deuces We'll talk to you soon. Um, and you guys, everybody else, have a have a wonderful night. See ya. See ya. Thanks. See ya.
All right, guys, a couple of questions came in after we killed the live feed. So I wanted to talk about some of them. Um, Anderson Santos asked, do you use string blur align to the riser to aim? The answer is yes. However, um, you know, the string blur for Barabell is oftentimes a little bit further to the outside of the riser because of the natural alignment of the anchor. So, you know, Olympic recurve notoriously under the chin, your alignment of your string is somewhere between next to the sight housing or the, the pin housing to inside the riser. Whereas in barebell, you'll see middle riser, edge of riser, somewhere near the plunger. For me, because I don't move my head and I anchor on the side of my face, um, my string blur personally will be usually out toward the end of the plunger. I don't care where the string blur is, as long as it's consistent and as long as my anchor and everything else is consistent. Because um, you tune, your tune is affected by where you anchor. Um, you know, left and rights are going to change a little bit. You know, like Dillinger anchors a little bit further forward. That brings the string out closer to in front of his eye. It's going to change the alignment of the string. But the short answer on that is yes, absolutely. At least know where it's at so that if you get some funky lefts and rights that you can at least check it and make sure that it's not, that's all it is. Don't start cranking on your plunger right away especially if there's wind. Matt Zernzak asked, is there a practical, said Frank, is there a practical way to practice shooting in high wind without wind, unstable footing, et cetera? Um, I mean, obviously unstable footing for a field. Um, for target, the best way to practice in wind is to practice in wind. So, you know, take an opportunity on a windy, miserable day and go shoot in windy, miserable conditions. Can you duplicate wind per se? I mean, you can shoot if you're going to go with the bow cant like Demer does. You can shoot that way. Um, and you're going to hit to the right or left or whatever you, whatever you choose to do. I choose to aim off. I don't get into canting because the setting of my grip and the position of my grip is something that I, I do deliberately. So, um, I'd rather just aim off. I have no problems aiming off. And you can practice aiming off all the time. Like literally, I was doing it today, as a matter of fact, on a 122 centimeter six ring target. I don't shoot at the big one. I shoot at like a six ring. Um, I'll aim at the number on the target instead of in the middle of the eight ring, um, instead of the middle of the target and try to shoot all of my arrows like right there on the red. Um, on the number that's actually on that target. Um, that's a good way to practice aiming off, to be honest. Um, Thomas Aaron said, can someone, or can some of you old, I don't even know what that word is, talk, I think he's talking about us guys all being old, um, talk about how you prevent hurting your shoulders when you ramp up your arrow volume in preparation for target nationals. So, you really shouldn't have um, shoulder pain at all. Um, you have to understand that um, if your alignment is good, you really shouldn't have any shoulder issues at all. You know, what's going on with Dillinger's bow, bow shoulder? I mean, it, it could be, it could be um, in his situation, something he did outside of archery, or it could be from years of shooting with that forward anchor, because what does the, what angle, the angle changes on this front shoulder when you anchor forward, all right? So you anchor forward, and unless you continue to try, you, you draw to anchor, but you're, you're coiling extensively and anchoring this way, but then it puts, um, then it puts tension on this shoulder. I mean, try it, try it as, as we're talking about it, come to full draw without moving your head, and then from there, I want you to move your anchor forward. What does that do with your, when you move your anchor forward, the tip of your elbow comes outside the arrow and these shoulders automatically go this way. Um, so you really need to take a good overhead look of what your vision, what your alignment looks like and when you're getting to anchor. It's funny that you 
you bring this up because I was actually talking with Matt Zernzak earlier in the day about that. You know, the one thing about the NTS that I completely agree with um, is, is getting to alignment really, really early before you come into anchor. You know, so when you go from the set to the setup position, set up and set that alignment, that alignment should be done because then it's just into your, into your anchor from there. Um, in regards to volume, like if it's not pain and it's just you're sore, drink lots of water, eat, eat food for recovery, take, you know, supplements like fish oil and magnesium and um, stuff like that, uh, glucosamine, so on and so forth. But also understand that as you ramp up your volume, if you're keeping score, there's a good chance that your scores are going to drop. That is okay. Don't get bent out of shape over it because um, you're breaking down your body. You're breaking down muscle. You're trying to get stronger. And the way that you do that is you break it down, rest, recover, build it back up. The most important thing for me personally, when you are taking like a periodization type, you know, ramp up, ramp up, ramp up, ramp up, ramp up. And then a couple weeks before ramp down, ramp down, ramp down, um, is that you take the appropriate amount of rest toward the end. You know, if you're shooting three, four, 500 arrows a week, um, four or five, six weeks out, and then in that last week, you only shoot, you know, 140 or, or, or 172 arrow around with some blind bail or whatever. That's the way to do it. You want to go into the tournament rested and ready to compete, like hungry to compete. Well, when you shoot all those arrows and you start shooting well, because as you start ramping back down, your scores will start climbing again. Um, and then that's how you peak for a tournament. That's not an archery thing. That's an athletics thing. Olympic weightlifting is where I learned it. Um, but powerlifting, bodybuilding, it all, it all is copacetic. Periodization, mesocycles, microcycles, all that stuff. Um, that it does work. I, I do it with the kids all the time. I do it with myself when I'm like training to really seriously shoot. I haven't really started training yet for outdoor nationals. So too much other stuff going on. But so for you guys that answer those questions, I hope they help. Um, and I hope those questions help. Um, I hope those answers help with your questions. And uh, that's it. Thank you, everybody, for uh, watching the Bearable Project. And again, thank you to our sponsors, um, you know, Excess Wings, you know, Starship Products, Arizona Archery Enterprises. Um, one more arrow, uh, and a, a new sponsor for us. Um, and um, everybody else. So, all right. Thank you.